you are training your dog all day long. Your dog is one big furry sponge just soaking up information. So because your dog's always in learning mode, you have to be in teaching mode. But if you look at training as just something that you punch the clock, you train and then boom, you go back to doing whatever the heck you want throughout the day, no. Training is just something that we can focus on in a, in a formal way to teach you skills to use all day long. You don't have any formal coaching. You don't have anybody helping you stay accountable. And if your current trainer isn't keeping you accountable, they're just going through the motions, then they lack the confidence, they lack the experience, or they lack the commitment and care level to get out of their comfort zone enough to get you out of yours. I have no problem doing that because there was a time when I didn't have the experience, I didn't have the knowledge, and therefore I wasn't as comfortable and as confident, but you know what? I've helped too many people, I've been doing this for too long, I'm gonna shout it from the mountaintops because I know my content works. I know it works when you work it. What is up, champion puppy owners? Do you really want to streamline ownership experience? Do you really want to socialize dog with manners, responsiveness, and general life skills? Great, you're in the right place. This podcast is for accountable puppy owners who want to better know and grow their dogs. Time to put on your big girl panties, buckle up, and ride with me. Pat Quinn, the founder and creator of the Champion Puppy Training System. Let's go. Welcome to or welcome back. As I'm recording this, it's a couple days away from the new year. And I want to go over something in and around goals. And what I want to go over to me is the most important things uh, in and around goals, and that's actually achieving them. And so I'm going to talk about today is plateauing in your puppy training. That means you're just kind of hitting a wall, you're hitting the ceiling, your dog isn't getting any better, but you're probably out of the woods where maybe your dog's going to the bathroom outside, it's not nipping as much, and it's somewhat responsive. You got a routine down. Now, it's not tight, your dog's not well trained, but it's good enough and you know now you can get back to the daily grind. I feel like you need to shoot for greatness and achieve it. I mean, that's really who I'm looking to appeal to. I want those go-getters. I want people to say, you know what? Um, I've gotten greatness in some areas of my life um, and sometimes it's only for seasons. You know, if you like reflect back on the good old days and you know, maybe sports or things like that where you've maybe pushed yourself, maybe you're in a season now of, of push. Maybe you're a person who's just dedicated to life and you're always in that season or you almost are always in that season. And so puppy training is one of those things that it's seasonal and you only get one chance at it, where your dog's brain is developing, so it's imperative that you take advantage of it in that only time that you're gonna have the opportunity. And so that's one reason why I'm so fired up about making sure that you hit your goals is because you only have one shot to do it correctly. That's why I only train puppies. The other reason is I know if you don't do this now, you will settle for life. You will get cozy in a trajectory either to mediocrity, which is a dog that's still a little whacked out, even as an adult dog, or that still has some manners issues and some residual stuff that, man, if you would have pushed just a little bit more on the front end, you wouldn't have. Or your dog, unbeknownst to you, is gonna be heading towards the trajectory of maybe having some pretty big deficits in some areas, whether that be anxiety or social skills or manners or you know some other stuff that it might have baggage with it now for life and never be able to max out because let's say eventually you want to have a second crack at a first season of making an inroad to having your dog you know have some of these life skills and that ship might have already come and gone it's sailed so that's why i want you to go nuts on the front end and just really drive 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 and then eventually you don't have to do any of this stuff the whole reason why I am intensive on the front end is because I know if we can just make that investment um, for like a good month or two as your puppy is young, as your puppy's a puppy, then now you're, you're, you're on a trajectory of greatness. Now that's just how you operate. You just have high standards and it doesn't even feel like you have high standards because you come to find out it actually makes your life easier while making your dog's life better. So unlike a lot of trainers who maybe are just like, 
Like, you know, this is why we do it because we care about the dog and like, this is how you can best serve your dog. Believe me, uh, that that's me. But I also know if you can serve your dog at a very high level and create standards for your dog, man, that makes your life easier. There's your big buy-in. I mean, we all start with, hey, I want to do great by this dog. But once the dog starts kicking your butt a little bit, you might say, man, I just want to get out of the woods. That's a dangerous mentality to have. I think what you'll find is you're just in a better woods. I want you out of the woods. I want you on some green pastures. So with that said, I have a list of 10. 10 reasons why either you're plateauing currently, heading towards a plateau, or if you're not even starting the training process yet, maybe you're just kind of doing some due diligence before you even get your puppy in your household, and kudos to you, then uh, just something to keep in mind, plant the seed, and when that alarm clock's going off, or you're you're thinking, ah, it should be good, just hopefully this go into the mental file cabinet, pull out this file, put it to work for you. All right, plateauing and puppy training, number one, not getting creative. So, not getting creative can mean not getting creative in making time where you might say, oh, well, you know, it's the holidays or I'm busy or, or this or that. Make time. So take time from something else. Kill two birds with one stone. Um, figure out a way to get in, like burning your dog's primal energy, maybe doing some formal food-based training, which shouldn't take longer than about 20 or 30 minutes a day, broken up into two or three sessions max. And that's only for a couple weeks. Taking your dog for a walk, making sure it, it, you drop its butt off at a doggy daycare. Hey, if you don't have the time, th- buy the time. You know that's that's essentially what we do for people. Is we you know provide um, a safe place where dogs are vaccinated, fixed, socially appropriate, and monitored. And so yeah, you know part with thirty some odd bucks and have your dog dropped off eight, 11 hours a day. I'm at a doggy daycare. Boom! Now all of a sudden you bought yourself time for that night to get done what you need to get done. Go food shopping, have your date night, run your kids around to sports the night of doggy daycare. The next morning, hey, you know what? You're gonna have to do next to nothing because your dog's still gonna be doggy daycare hungover. That next night though, you had your time. All right, now it's time to come home and, and, and get it in. Time to, time to play with your dog, time to get back on that training train. And then maybe a day or two after that, um, as, as you, your dog starts to amp up its energy level and your life starts to get busy in other capacities, boom, you bring your dog back to doggy daycare. So find out what that regimen is and that's what I mean by like literally buying time or not using your time effectively. I don't care about your personal goals. I mean, this should carry over to everything you do in life. You should want to you know, get the, get the most out of life and fit things in there the silos that make sense and where they should have given space in your life. But if you need to bump some things out of your habit stream temporarily, now's the time. Put them back in later. You have to earn the right to watch that TV, right? So there's no, there's nothing wrong with watching TV or you know calling a friend or something like that. But here's some things that I would maybe do. Give yourself that phone call with a friend, that TV time or that social media time as a reward after you burn your dog's energy. And pair your dog's chewing with confinement with your reward. So give yourself triggers. You're basically training yourself to train your dog better. In my system, we go over the different kind of bones that you would use given a a given scenario Um, like your dog's energy level and the station that it's at during the day and what you have going on. So that we have different like rankings of bones, different categories. And then we have different levels of confinement. Make the space for yourself so you can come back and be a more active owner. Don't try to skimp out on it because you'll end up paying the price. And when that happens, just note it. Say, okay, I I skimped. I I try to cut corners and this is what happens. Another way you're not getting creative is by making space, by actually like getting your dog outside maybe uh, to train in the driveway. You're not getting creative with the actual sessions. That you're not up in the ante as your dog's responsiveness improves and challenging yourself or your dog. You're not putting on a jacket 
and turning those slippers in for shoes and going outside. Knowing that, that's gonna pay dividends for things like potty training. Hey, if you train outside when it's in freezing temps, um, and you know that you're trying to get your dog to pee or poop real quick so you can you know, get, get to work or you know, get, get to your next activity. If your dog can be outside doing some food-based training or training through play, it's gonna disregard the cold and it's gonna go to the bathroom for you. So you should work on potty training via tug and food-based training outside. Everybody wants their dogs to listen to them outside, but most people don't wanna train their dogs outside. So I have to set that as a standard for my clients. And not only do I have to set that as a standard, but it's one that I have to revisit and, and, I, and it almost be a little bit stern as I'm very direct in letting them know, hey, you gotta get outside and train your dog. Like this is something we talked about on, in the beginning before you signed up with me. And I don't want, you know, six months from now, you kind of be scratching your head and saying, oh, well, I wish my dog was trained like my neighbor's dog. Well, yeah, I'll, I want your dog to be trained better than your neighbor's dog. But that's only gonna happen is if you train your dog better than your neighbor trained their dog. So get outside to train, or maybe you might still be inside training your dog, prepping for a high level of responsiveness and motivation outside. What you would do then is just get creative with things like the vacuum, or kids running around, or the other animal in the household, or people coming in and out of the, the front door as you're training your dog. If the weather's nice, train your dog around the front door with it wide open, and do some threshold training, which I'm not gonna get into in this session, just start to make it a little bit harder in that given base, in that given environment where your dog is currently at. And just think about, again, how you can wean off your verbal, your body language, your leash communication. And so you're gonna be reducing the amount of guidance that you give your dog while reducing the amount of rewards that your dog's getting while you're phasing out food-based training and you're, you're replacing it with praise or training through play all while upping up the distraction level. Because you're, you're gonna know that when you go outside, it's gonna get exponentially harder. That inside you can add little two and a half pound plates on that bar as you're looking to increase your, your puppy's strength. But then once you go outside, it's like adding some big boy plates on that bar, right? Where you're, you're, you're putting some, some, some heavy weight on there. What you wanna do is take it as far as possible in the house, increasing the distance, distraction, and duration. Um, having a high level of responsiveness with minimal rewarding that's food based. You want it to be more praised based and next to no food and have your dog be just as responsive with tug and fetch um, as in my system, the same drills that we do with food are the exact same drills we do with play. So mainly that would mean getting a sit, stay, stare to get the item thrown, sit, stay, stare to get released to go and get that item, having a nice quick retrieval back to you and dropping it quickly. And once your dog drops it, going into that sit, stay, stare again. So everything comes full circle. So number one, you're not getting creative with managing your time and driving the process. And also a bonus part of number one, we'll call it number 1.5, not getting creative in upping the distractions in the environment where you're at and just making it harder on, on yourself, it, basically getting creative to make it harder on, on yourself, knowing that what, what's coming next is going to be very hard. You know, once you make that next step outside, that's a big milestone. It's almost like people in the military, right? In order to get ready for boot camp, you gotta kick your butt or you gotta like, join some training program where you're ready for boot camp. And the reason why, they, why in the military, you know, some boot camps more than others, some trainings more than others, they kick their soldiers' butts is because they want them to sweat so they can avoid unnecessary casualties and other very negative things that, that can occur actual, actually on the battlefield. And so, so when that recruit is training for boot camp, they should be thinking, I need to kick my butt before my drill instructor does. I need to make sure I'm ready for this drill instructor. Like, I don't know what to anticipate. I don't know what's gonna, be, all I know is that it's gonna be intense. And so as you're working with your dog inside, you need to have that level of creativity. Like, okay, if I'm getting ready for, for boot camp, what do they do in boot camp? Okay, well, they do like burpees and they do all this like intensive calisthenic stuff. So 
I'm gonna start doing that. And, and I'm gonna think, okay, if I don't have logs to carry, you know, with teammates, what, what's comparable to that? You know, maybe I'm gonna grab a big old heavy bag and, and haul that sucker around, so that way when they throw logs over my back with, with other uh, guys, um, I'm gonna just, my body's gonna be somewhat adapted to that. It's gonna respond. And what the drone instructors are thinking about during boot camp is, hey, I've been to war, or at the very least, I've studied, I've studied it. What do these guys need to know, um, and how do they need to react? What skill sets do they need to have so they're ready for it? When you're inside, start envisioning yourself being outside and kick your butt harder so that way you are the master of your own being. That you're not going to go outside and let a squirrel kick your butt, right? Think about it, like I'm not gonna lose out to an employee, um, a dog, anything else during the day, just you know, like a mechanical repair that comes up. In the morning, the first thing I do is I try to kick my butt harder than anybody else can. I mean, I'm, I try to get to the gym at least five days a week and I, and I try to like basically like kill myself at the gym where I'm, I'm drenched in sweat, you know, I'm pushing myself. And so by the time I come home, the hardest part of my day is one, checked off the list and two, it's done by me. It's not done by a squirrel, <laughs> you know? Just think about it in that context. I'm not gonna let a broken down car, you know, something stupid that happens in the mail or anything like that rock me for, for the day. Life stuff's gonna come, come up. Squirrels are gonna pop their little heads out of the tree. But be, be working toward that all day, every day. Number two, not pushing yourself. Well, I kind of jumped into that already. I jumped the gun a little bit on my tangent, but you got to push yourself because if you don't push yourself, you're going to wish you did. You're going to wish that in that moment where you have a complete lack of control with your puppy and you're frustrated and your puppy's making you look like an idiot and you feel less than, in that moment, you're going to think, I could have done more. And it depends what you hold on to. If you're holding on to like, oh, I want to like work on my skill set and see how far I can take it, and that's your mentality, versus, oh, this was such a horrible thing, but then you forget about it. I hate the way this made me feel, but then you're like, bad. Then you, you you just hide that away in the the memory bank that you you cover up with the path of the big wide road of of easy, where then you just muddle through. I want you to hold on to this spot where you are just focused, where you're working toward maxing out your puppy versus getting super frustrated in a moment and then from there forgetting about it. Even in those frustrating moments, if you're working on maxing out your puppy, you're going to know why your dog failed because you would have assigned like numeric values to things. You're going to have an uh, overall communication system that both you and your puppy understand or at the very least are starting to become fluent in. And so then when you fail, you're not even going to get frustrated. You're going to say, oh, I know where I need to go back to the lab and, and work this out. And next time, if I'm not completely ready, I'm going to be a lot more ready. So that's how winners think about things. They don't get super frustrated when there's failures. They just identify it as like a failing forward scenario that they learned from, they extracted info, and then it inspired them. It's really two different lenses. So you not pushing yourself can be very emotional if you allow it to be. If you just draw a line in the sand and say, no, this is what I'm gonna do. All of a sudden you take the emotion out of it and that's what I'd encourage you to do and just turn this into a game where I'm teaching you how to put points on the board. I'm literally telling you, all right, this is a field goal. This is six points. This is you know an additional point, or this is two additional points. This is how you can remain on offense and have possession of the ball. You know, this is a running play. This is a Hail Mary. I'm giving you what the, the, what the penalties are. I'm, I'm explaining the game to you. And so just turn it into a game and, and run with it. So push yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Don't get all emotional. Say like, oh, I'm gonna train this dog, and then all of a sudden, like, be like, well, he's doing good. I don't want to hear that your dog's doing good. I want you just to, to to keep. I want your dog to be great, and for you to never be satisfied. I want everyone else to tell you that your dog's doing good, not you reaffirming that you, you haven't hit your goals by you saying, well, he's he's doing good. That's crap. Let's call it what it is. Anyway, you're not pushing yourself hard enough. Be, be brutally honest with yourself. 
the good news is, is that the next one is seeking out coaching. This gives you information so you know how to push yourself. You need to seek out information on a reoccurring basis so your mind is fresh with ideas and um, inspiration. I listen to podcasts and audiobooks all day long. Even when I'm not, I'm typically listening to music that has me in a, a go get them kind of attitude. And so you need to really be consuming training info constantly. All right. So that's going to make it where you can push yourself in a nice, healthy way and you can get creative. So seeking out that information constantly. And I might be a little bit biased here, but I believe getting all your information with one solid base makes the most sense. The reason is information, especially on the internet about puppy training is extremely contradictory. So if you're going to a, a bunch of different wells that are like contradictory, you're, you're going to it's going to dilute. It's going to dilute your, your willpower. It's just going to make you second guess everything you do. And that second guessing is going to take away from your implementing and you're never going to taste the results from either system. So if you want to give your dog a piece of chicken every time it, you know, is doing something it should be. And, um, you, you just want to sit there and get sloppy and, and basically be a human vending machine. Boom. Hit stop. Now go jump on somebody else's system and, and go at it wholeheartedly because you'll probably get more results by you know being a chicken vending machine versus sticking to, to my script. Go stick to somebody else's script, um, but stick to a script and seeking out that information will really help you push yourself and get creative. Um, I already kind of went over this in the first one, but not making time for sessions. In my system, I give you something called a Kong Wobbler to utilize and that will allow you to make sure your dog has food drive and can keep it mentally stimulated even when you're, you don't necessarily have time to do a food-based training session with your dog. Now, with that said, you still have to make time to train with your puppy. All right, here's the next one coming at you. Not infusing training in your dog's daily interactions. And if you can figure out ways to incorporate what we've been doing on the field with food and training through play with interactions that you're having with them all day long. Now you just get this, this compounding interest that this amazing use of your time and really get to reinforce good manners and responsiveness in your dog all day long. But if you look at training as just something that you punch the clock, you train and then boom, you go back to doing whatever the heck you want throughout the day. No, training is just something that we can focus on in a, in a formal way to teach you skills to use all day long, especially in my system. We do most of our work in the subconscious where your dog doesn't think it just does. It just responds from muscle memory and conditioning. So for that reason, um, I want you to tap into that all day long and then just have it be a better part of its habit stream. So think about like if you ever make a purchase that you don't think too much about, it's just part of your habit stream. And that advertising and, and the placement on that end cap in the grocery store or maybe by the checkout line is there for a reason. And so it'd be like having a bunch of commercials like all day long and then not having the, the, the placement of that said product in a way that makes sense. Like, like you have to do all this prep work to have somebody in that buying state and then boom, that last thing is like, you want them to actually purchase it. We want that carryover. We want to have that purchase be made. And so um, in order to do that, we have to make sure that we're taking, again, these concepts and principles that we're um, infusing in your puppy's habit stream on the field, treat all day long as a big stage for a training session. So I've already mentioned this a little bit, but not wanting to be uncomfortable. So we like to get the, that instant gratification. We don't like to be cold. The best things in life don't come instantly. The best successes that you will have will come with some heartache and hassle. Commit yourself to being uncomfortable. Live in the uncomfortable for a little bit. And in doing so, you actually hit those results that you want. So. Um, just in general, get used to, to being uncomfortable. Another reason, so as I continue down this list, 
is not recommitting yourself to the calls. Again, you're gonna go back and forth with like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, and all of a sudden you get busy and you fall off the horse for a day. And just to be able to, to keep coming back and saying like, it's worth it. And you know what, I, I might have skimped on training tomorrow, but I'm not today. That, that's not gonna happen ever again. And then all of a sudden it does a week later, but who cares, you just recommit yourself again. And many times I recommit my clients to remind them how beneficial this is for their life. I know I mentioned this earlier in the podcast, but remember, you're doing this so that way for the next 10 plus years, your life is easier and your dog's life happens to be better. So think about when guests are coming over or just your daily regimen. Look at your puppy now as an adult dog. You're ironing out your these habit streams so your daily regimen is easy peasy. So you don't have to do all the structured stuff and your dog, you know, you can skimp on a tug session, your dog's not a complete butthead. All right, here's something else that, again, this all kind of ties in together, but I'm gonna break it down a little bit more. Not doing what you need to do. Man, sometimes you'll get that content, you'll, you're, you're seeking it out, and you won't implement it. And I think about the book readers or people who listen to podcasts and audiobooks like I do all day long, and then they're constantly seeking out like different coaching and, and this and that, but they're, they're not implementing. They're signing up for the next course. They're buying the next book. They're doing the next you know, training program at the gym. You know you shouldn't be putting that crap in your mouth. You know you can push yourself harder. But yet we keep signing up because we lie to ourselves. So what I want for you to do is instead just do what you need to do. Think, what's the next step? Where am I going? And just, just get it done. And so, I don't know, maybe that last statement is gonna help you, give you some strength and keep you real with yourself for what your goals are in the new years above and beyond your puppy. The other thing, and why we don't do what we need to do, kind of ties in with that, is you don't care that much. Like I already mentioned, we tell ourselves these lies as we have this internal speak. I want you to become aware of what you're saying to yourself, whether you're making excuses um, about your dog's progress, whether you're being accountable and really owning it. Like, yeah, you can blame me. I mean, I, I get up every day at, at the butt crack of dawn or actually before the butt crack of dawn and try to put some content out there, try to work on my skills and things like that to really bring it to you, you know, for, for the sake of you and your puppy. But you might say, he's not making sense or, or you can blame your trainer, your your kids. Uh, you might might have even had like a death in, in, in close to you. You might have been ill. You might have experienced job loss. Maybe some breakdowns in some like relationships around you that can be taxing. You know, sometimes the, the, the toxic relationships and stuff can be taxing, and it just sucks the wind out of your sails and your life. Um, or if you have like a toxic job environment right now. The biggest one why, why, why we lie to ourselves when I, I catch my clients doing this is they have busy schedules. Wake up call. I made my system in my busy schedule with toddlers and a day job that was very demanding and where I was training dogs full time as well and I take into consideration a busy person's schedule and I that's what my system is, is made around. And so if you catch yourself telling yourself a lie um, or BSing yourself, just think about, again, recommitting and just catching yourself with that, with that self-talk. And you can really fool yourself with that. You can really say it's not worth it um, or like I should be and all this other stuff. What, whatever your self-talk is that is getting you further away from your puppy training objectives, I want you to catch yourself and be honest with yourself. And if you're gonna plateau and if your puppy's gonna plateau, just think about, hey, this is where I'm, I'm ringing the bell. I'm tapping out. This is, uh, you know, this is it, and, and I'm gonna live with, with this for the rest of my life, and own it. My business is at its current state because of me. My marriage is at its current state because of me. My parent, my, you know, my, my relationship with my daughters is where it's at because of me. My health is where it's at because of me. My financial state is where it's at because of me. And I know all of those things could be better, and that's on me. So I want you to kind of have that, that same sort of like ownership. Lastly, you're not getting any coaching. So I don't want you to get coaching for the sake of getting coaching. I don't care if you work with your local trainer. 
Um, if you want me to take you by the hand and, and walk you through this process, I, I have no milestones. I have known points that I need you to hit right on time and I'll have you hit them right on time. And if there's a little bit of a delay, it doesn't really matter. I'll be able to get you through it. So if you're lagging a certain area or two, I know how to clean it up and get you right back on track. What's kind of cool in my system is that if you do have a little bit of a um, deficit, that that just exposes your dog's weakness. You know, that exposes where it could benefit more from like manners or maybe a lax food drive that would eventually creep up on, on your results later on down the process. So really my system just exposes any issues like right from those first set of drills that we do and right from the, that management process. Whether you're working with a local trainer or if you're grappling with the idea of maybe working with me, an online trainer, then what I want for you to do is at least get some coaching Know that in my system, what I lack in being able to grab your dog's leash and work with you directly, I do make up for in convenience. I do make up for in having a very set systematic approach where I will give you known milestones to reach. And if you um, are having issues with reaching them, I'll be able to spell out exactly what you need to do and really break it down for you. And that I take into consideration the whole picture you know, both the management in and around your home, um, as well as the obedience. I take in behavioral modification into consideration and really look at life skills versus just a puppy class that just kind of goes through basic obedience and some crappy puppy play at the end. But you know, like I said earlier, it doesn't matter who you necessarily coach with, but you got to put it into place. You, you got to embrace it and you have to be accountable. That coach is just there to tell you what to do and to, to push you a little bit. Um, you got to be the one driving that process. So with that in mind, going into this new year, um, I want you to hit it hard. I want you to use, hopefully you have a couple days off of work. I want you to use that time to seek out some information and start messing around with this stuff. You will make your biggest strides by taking info and just messing around with it. As what I refer to is just kind of going back to the lab. Stole that from Eminem a little bit from, from one of his songs. But it's, that's essentially what you're doing is you're just going back to the lab and you're messing with this stuff and with the with the distance, distraction, duration, with my five drills, which is sit, stay at the food bowl, come in when called, the look command, food throw, and stay. And then once you're working on all those stays, you start putting you know the look command and combining them. So now you have sit, stay, stairs for everything. Now you take that and you apply it to training through play. And now we take what you've been doing in the home, we take it outside and then from there we start to do it you know without rewards where you're just doing it because that that's the new standard and you're, and you're getting it and so you're just during all these different parts though you're experimenting you're testing and you're like i said i'm giving you the parameters to look at the time you spend with your dogs as as a laboratory as as a game field and you're just literally just, just doing these studies and, and you're looking at your dog through a whole different lens versus just, again, punching the puppy training time clock at the big box store. So if that's what you wanna do, then what you're listening to on these podcasts where I go on these deep rants or what you're checking out on my social media where I have these videos that are all rooted in a systematic approach versus just a bunch of one-off sit stays that won't really stick or some other stuff that like Paul and like like leave it, which you know a lot of times I see owners do and it doesn't really work. Know that it's a, at completely opposite ends of the spectrum. So just to review the reasons why you might be plateauing in your puppy training. Number one, you're not getting creative with the things you can control in your training environments. Think increasing distance, distraction, and duration while weaning off the amount of rewards that your puppy's getting, while it's bringing its natural motivation and willingness to train to the table, and at the same time, reducing the amount of verbal communication, body language, as well as the amount that you're using the leash. So that's number one. Number two, you're not pushing yourself. You, you're not doing what you know you need to do. Number three, you're not making time for formal training sessions. Just carve out five minutes a day, two or three times a day for the food-based training sessions, and you should be beating your dog's energy to the punch so your dog's not kicking your butt and you're burning primal energy while building up manners and responsiveness and impulse control and guidability in your puppy 
um, via tub. That's where the majority of your time, your formal training time should be had. Number four, you're not infusing training all day long into your interactions with your dog. So training isn't just done formally. Don't punch the, the training time clock and, and then start acting sloppy for the other uh, 22, 23 hours of the day. You are training your puppy all day long. Number five, not constantly consuming training info. If you're not bombarding your eardrums, your eyeballs with this content, you will be always kind of at a little bit of a disconnect. You'll always have the knowledge, but not be motivated enough to put it into place. Seek out information that makes sense, that gets you inspired, and even I know my teaching style, especially on these podcasts, and as you consume my content in dribs and drabs, can be a little bit confusing. That's why I have my system where if you wanna to work together, I start at the start and I build you up methodically. So, number six, not wanting to be uncomfortable. It's cold outside, it's drizzling. Not an excuse. If you want your dog to respond and to you outside or pee quickly for you outside, go train outside. Uh, now's the time to do it and next season, and the season after that, and the season after that, and the season after that, and so on and so forth, you will not have to be outside with your adult dog with an umbrella just so it will go pee. Or having to push your dog outside because it's raining out a little bit and it puts its brakes on at the back door. So you wanna avoid that now? Great, just go play with your dog when it's drizzling. Number seven, not recommitting yourself to the calls. You will fall off the horse. You will run into hurdles. You will get busy. But when you get knocked down, don't stay down. Just get right back at it. And if anything, come back with a, if anything, come back with a higher level of commitment, a higher level of fervor to get the job done. Number eight, not doing what you need to do. Now that you have the content, you're inspired, um, you have some ideas about techniques, start messing around with it. Go back to that lab and see what works, what doesn't, and then that way, when you watch that same video again, maybe you'll have that aha moment. Number nine, you don't have any formal coaching. You don't have anybody helping you stay accountable. And if your current trainer isn't keeping you accountable, they're just going through the motions, then they lack the confidence, they lack the experience, or they lack the commitment and care level to get out of their comfort zone enough to get you out of yours. I have no problem doing that because there was a time when I didn't have the experience, I didn't have the knowledge, and therefore I wasn't as comfortable and as confident, but you know what? I've helped too many people, I've been doing this for too long, I'm gonna shout it from the mountaintops because I know my content works. I know it works when you work it. All right, number 10, you don't care that much. You're lying to yourself. You say that you care, and in that moment, you really do. When your dog's making you look like a buffoon, you really do care that much. But later on, when your dog's sleeping, and you're back to, back to your quiet home front, and things are good enough, and he's, you know, there's no guests to jump on, and, and everything's titty caca, there's no problems. Think about how you're gonna look in your bathing suit at the beach in July, in January, think about how your dog is going to present when your guests come over or when you bring them out and about all day long. All right, hit it hard going into the new year. I'll be here for you in the new year. And the year after that, and the year after that, God willing, keep bringing it, and I will too. Remember, champion puppy owners, action over anxiety, discipline equals freedom. Take the next step, do what you know how to do drive the puppy training process. Truly commit yourself to this, hit it hard for a short period of time so you can stop working on your dog and simply enjoy them. I'll see you next time. Peace. The biggest one why, why we lie to ourselves when I catch my clients doing this is they have busy schedules. Wake up call. I made my system in my busy schedule with toddlers and a day job that was very demanding and where I was training dogs full time as well, and I take into consideration 
a busy person's schedule and I that's what my system is, is made around.